Okay, so here we are with another video. And this is what's sent by a watcher. It says, the fashion industry made me a porn star. Actually, let me roll this up a little bit so you guys can see it. No, you still can't see that. Hang on. Oh, wait, no, you won't be able to see it because my dumb ass is fucking up. Okay, so here we are. So, anyway, you guys can see it. Oh, wait, you can see it in the top. The fashion industry made me a made me a porn star. That's the name of this video. Secret Confessions of a Dominatrix. So, make sure it's on. Okay. Here we go. I've had many shoots, but poor no hair and makeup is by far the best. So, you're kind of devastated when it's going to be messed up soon. My name's Contessa Doll. I'm a professional dominatrix. I'm currently single, but of course. hoping to get divorced soon. And I'm pansexual. 20 years in the industry, I started out um, stripping. I came from a modeling background, and I have to say, fashion modeling killed my self-esteem. It killed who I was as a person. It killed my identity. They wanted me to be androgynous. I didn't want to be that. I wanted to be sexy. I wanted to be a girl. I liked girly things. I was told I was too fat, too short. And then suddenly, when I went to the adult industry and did waitressing at Joanna's back in the day, suddenly, I'm getting compliments. And I read men's magazines instead of fashion magazines. And that made me feel good about myself as a person and my body. And once I could save up to buy boobs, there was no looking back. Like, I hate the fashion industry. I love the adult industry. I've only been doing like the full service part like two years. And that's also the time I started doing porn was like when I left my now ex. So I'm um, in a different state put the phone on hands-free and called up mum and dad and told them that um, I was doing porn and there was a long pause. And then dad said, did you really need the money that much? You should have come to us. And I said, it's not about the money. And my mother said, no one wants to do stuff like that. Like, who made you do it? I'm like, me, I wanted to do it. And yeah, then dad said, you mean anyone can see these videos? Uh, yeah, as my nephew found out the hard way. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at that. Sorry, Tristan. <laughs> sex on camera is not real sex. It's fake, and I'm going to tell you a few secrets of the porn industry. It's all acting. You're having sex for the camera. You're not having sex for yourself. You would love to have sex for yourself. It takes a whole day to shoot. Once you get into the hair and makeup, and the hair and makeup, I tell you, is fantastic. I've had many shoots, but poor no hair and makeup is by far the best. So you're kind of devastated when it's going to be messed up soon. The first time I did a facial, just begging them if we could not do it because I really like the hair and makeup and I wanted to go out afterwards. Mm. No, no, that got messed up. <laughs> and uh, then first you get into the positions. Of, um, they do the photo shoot first, of the positions of what you're going to do when you're filming. Then you start having sex and then, the, like, before you can even enjoy it. It's cut, fix the bed, change positions, fix her hair, and uh, the cum scenes. One cum scene is real, the rest are fake. Yeah, just, just a matter of angles, so the camera can see everything, and sideways. Who gives a blowjob sideways, come on? It's so the camera can see, and the poor cameraman has to get in that angle. The fake jizz, you can put it anywhere on me. You can buy it online or you can make your own. And I've used hair conditioner at one stage because the guy couldn't come. And men are comparing themselves to Mr. Porno Guy and all these come. And sorry, it's probably coconut hair conditioner. And the squirting scenes. Just douche water inside yourself and squirt it out. That's one thing I hate about porn. It's a movie. It's like Star Wars. Special effects. It's not the real deal. It's there to entertain. It's not there to teach. It's not an educational tool. It's a movie, especially those squirting scenes. And if you can squirt for real, good on you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have relationships with this kind of work mm. because yeah. I want to give 100%. And it's just a personal choice. It's got nothing to do with jealousy. I can date. I have dated people that have been in the adult industry. I don't right. have any jealousy. I know what's real. I know what's fake. But personally, if I was in love with someone, I could not give the same 100% service when I'm thinking about just wanting to be with my partner. And that goes for any job that I do. Yeah, with mental health, um, I'd have to say everything that has to do with my mental health that has come from pr my past 
has come from outside of work. With stripping and that, yeah, of course, like that did my head in, that made me hate men. It was BDSM that brought me back down to really liking men again. And um, whenever I need downtime is because I'm exhausted, because BDSM takes a lot out of you. It's not like just, yeah, hit it and quit it. It's like a lot of prep and then talking to the guys, getting inside their heads. You're giving a lot of yourself and then the aftercare and all that and then cleaning up the equipment after. That's what more exhausts me than anything else. And I always tell people if you're torturing yourself to do this job, don't do it. I believe the Sydney sex industry does have a lot of support for sex workers, not for the rest of the world, which is really, really sad. That's where I say it should be legalised. World's oldest industry, we've been here the longest, we should be legalised. Oh, the most memorable one happened last year. This 80-year-old sweet grandpa came in. He wanted a Tabasco sauce enema, which is an enema, if you know what that is. It is liquid put inside the anus. He wanted Tabasco sauce, so I just diluted it with water just to, yeah, save time. As soon as it was in there, I put the butt plug in. He writhed around in pain for a while, and then it was over. He went home, limping, but happy. The whole time, I kept thinking, is this my future? Because I'm a bit of a pain slut. Is this what I'm going to be at the age of 80? I just thought to myself, OK, maybe I should slow down with a few stuff that I'm doing. It's kind of like any drug, any high take it in moderation or you soon will be putting Tabasco sauce in your ass. Okay, so my opinion of this video, I think the title is a bit misleading, honestly. I think the title is a bit misleading. I think the reality of what we have here is, is she's that... My opinion is, and this might get brutal, so she sees it. Well, this is just my fucking opinion about it. Um, my opinion is, this fits that spe that that not that that, that borderline. Uh, okay, in videos I did a while back of saying like why sometimes you really don't want to deal with women who are like sevens, is because depending on what area of you know wh where they are and where they are in the world, you know what they have access to a woman who is who's a seven depend on if she goes to this club over here she can end up dropping to a three or she goes to this other club and she can go to a, and she can become a a, a, a ten so they, they get really confused on where they really fit in as their value as physically desirable woman they get really confused so from what i gather from this whole video was that she uh she she started out stripping, you know, and stripping depend on where she was again. That can really go in different areas. Cause I mean, there was a strip club down the street. I live in a nice area actually, you know, in, in Dayton, Ohio. But there was a, there was this this, uh, this gentleman's club strip strip club down the street. And I see some girls, and I was in America. Some of those girls were completely gorgeous, and other ones were like, all right, if you've seen them at a library type of shit. It that that that, that when they start off as strippers. That is like the, okay, sh in my opinion, I don't have respect for strippers. I just, I don't like, I don't, I don't like strippers. I think they're fucking pathetic. Uh, I, th I, I, I think it's, I think the whole thing about, about, about stripping is just pathetic. I think stripping for women is like a guy who buys the weakest motorcycle and thinks he's a manly man now because he bought this, you know, this, this super weak motorcycle that you know probably has two horsepower in it, but just for the fact that it's man with man with motorcycle or man with whatever thing, maybe man he bought a little twenty two and now he thinks he's a fucking hardcore gangster that can you know shoot a fucking you know can a, a forty five with ease. Like it's that it, in my opinion, stri stripping is just the fake I want to the, the fake I think I'm badass woman because hey, I'm woman I can sell just by standing here naked. And just move a little bit, <laughs> cause half the most of the bitches can't even dance in strip clubs. Now, especially now, all they know how to do is just just bend over and jiggle their fucking ass while they, while they're wearing heels and have their hair long, and that's that's all it takes. So, in my opinion, I don't have respect for strippers. But 
from where she's coming from, if I had to guess, okay, she she's not the most beautiful woman on the planet. Which she's already said in an indirect way. The the model agency wanted her to be androgynous, which I don't know if you guys know what that means. If anybody doesn't know what androgynous means, it means uh, a person who has the qualities of a man and a woman. So when you look at them, uh, not quite intersex. Not not quite intersex. I think intersex is more like a hermaphrodite, but androgynous like a is, is, is her name Tilda Swinton. The woman who was in Constantine, and she it's, it's a woman. She's a woman. She was in Constantine. She was in Avengers movie. She I forget that character, but she was with uh, in Doctor Strange's world. That 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 Tilda Swinton type, you know, like she doesn't quite look like a man, but she also doesn't quite look like a woman. She's like depending on what angle you see her in, if she's smiling or what she's wearing, like you would you couldn't really tell. So she told you off the bat, she's not the most beautiful woman, right? But. She is a woman, okay? She has, she has breasts. She's, I guess she has a vagina. I don't know yet. Uh, <laughs> she has breasts. She, she has she has an ass. Uh, her breasts weren't that great because she had to buy boobs, she said. But but she could essentially, you know, in America, because she, she says she's in this, or, or, no, or no, she's in Australia. In these Western countries, a lot of times they can just stand there, just stand there, be woman, and some beta will come and fucking worship the ground she walks on, right? But the thing is, when she... What I'm gathering from her story was after she went to the, uh, the fashion industry, she, she, she didn't want to do that. No, no. Well, long story short, she didn't want to do it because there's, there, there's prettier girls in it. And I'll come back to that later. She didn't want to do it because there was prettier girls in her. She wanted to be girly. She wanted to do porn. And, and porn essentially didn't really fuck with, like, mainstream porn. So she went to BDSM shit. Okay. And that, that from what I get from that is... Like most women, if there's women who are prettier than them in that room, they don't want to be in that room. And a lot of times that's what humbles a woman and brings her back down to reality in that room. Now, like like her, like this woman, they'll go off into another world where there's not many people in that field and then fucking take off in that field relatively, you know, and have a successful career. Like, for example, well, now I think it's kind of getting diluted because, you know, women do what women do. Women find one thing that's worth something and they fucking beat it in the ground. So what do women do? They went to Twitch. They, they, the women became female gamers. They sit in front of a camera with their fucking tits hanging out. Oh, hee 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 hee. You know what I'm saying? And got, and got beta chumps to fucking send the money on, on there. It's what women do. They're going to go off into a field that, that, that's, that they, they have to be, like, woman's entire currency is her attention for 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 just walking in a room and being a woman that that is the woman's height it that, like there is no higher achievement to woman than walking in a room and being wanted and desired and lusted over just because she existed for no other reason you see and she wasn't getting that and 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 was that is it in fashion industry no she wouldn't she wouldn't get that in there and in in, in like regular porn she like she get used and abused sometimes and then kick the fuck out. You know, let's face it, she wasn't happy with that, and she found her niche. She found her her niche is you know getting away from the more mainstream. Like when women like like women, and I'm not even trying to talk shit about her. This woman, if she's watching, it's just the reality of it. The less prettier they are, the, the more they got to do this specialized shit. Because if they, if, she, if they was pretty pretty for real, they 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 wouldn't have to do this shit. All right, so now they had to go off and do this fucking you know deep throat and telephone poles on cameras and shoving Tabasco sauce up dudes' asses and shit like that and, and playing whatever mental trick she has to do to just say like yeah I I really want to do that. No, she didn't want to do it. <laughs> she didn't want to do it. Like I say all the times before. Like I say all the times before. All the times. Think back. I did a video a while back that would constantly compare, like, constantly compare, uh, or, or, or it would be a pretty woman be interviewed, then, like, a not-so-pretty woman be interviewed. And and I, you can predict what's going to come out their mouths. If she's pretty, she's not doing a whole lot of work or effort for anything. But if she's not pretty, oh, now she's thinking about her actual partner in the future and how do we coexist, blah, blah, blah. I think it was the movie American Psycho. I think it was that movie. Now, this is some real shit. He's yeah, Christian Bale in. It's an older movie. But America Psycho had Christian Bale. And in the movie, I think I think Reese Witherspoon was in it, too, for a short time. But um, he says something along the lines of, and I've been thinking about this for the last few days for some reason. I've been thinking about this. And this is real shit. If she's pretty, she's not nice. And if she's nice, she's not pretty. 
And it's always been like that. Because that, that that's woman's core fucking purpose of existence and how they can rate themselves on, on, on their that that's what's valuable to woman is being desirable to the world. And like I said, I think in the last video, what sends a man and a woman spiraling in the depression? A man's is usually realizing he's mortal, you know, and it really hits him. Women, they don't really care about that so much. Women care more about once she figures out she's not desirable, that'll send her down a spiral of depression and blah, blah, da, da, da. Once she feels, oh, there's newer, hotter girls coming out. There's, you know, I can't, I'm just going to get older and I can't re I can't become younger myself. And I'm now, I'm, now I, I, you know, woman does that shit. And it was funny because I was watching a Saturday Night Live skit. They had, what's that uh, girl who played it? Was that Red, Red Sky or some shit like that? Red Beetle? What's that bitch name to play? Uh, Jessica Lawrence. Jessica Lawrence, she played this waitress, right? And they tell, like, see, this is why I love New York, man, because New York knows the reality. New York City gen generally knows the reality with shit. So, like, so they're okay with touching on these topics. But they they had a skit with Jennifer Lawrence, and she and she did exactly what I what I explained. She bends down and tells these two couples the worst things they can hear. And she bends down and tells the woman that she peaked in high school and will now sleep with any man who asks her. And then she and, and she bent down and told the man something like, "You like uh, you 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 are gonna die and you're gonna die miserable and alone." Those are the two, I'm telling you, those are the two things that that on average are gonna send the two sexes spiraling. And y'all yeah, remember that skill, Sarah and that live? I, I think they pulled it where. They're talking about uh, sexual harassment, and when Tom Brady came in, he could do whatever he wanted, and it wasn't sexual harassment. And like I think Fred Armisen, I, I always pronounce his name wrong. He he well he walked in the room like being polite, and they called the police on him. And shit. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That's why I love New York, man. New York moves too fast, so they don't got time. New York is like my opinion. New York, if if you if you're in the states and 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 you want to travel. My and you, you want to leave the U.S. I would say go to New York City. New York City is like. The baby is like is like the first step to seeing how the rest of, how the world really is. New York City is like the, the 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 initial step to seeing what what reality is for real. The motherfuckers ain't got time for that shit. I'm sure there's you know demographics here and there, but for the most part they move too fast. Motherfuckers there move too fast. But um, but yeah, no, yeah, this girl woman whatever she end up uh in BDSM, which is which you know that that is a. That, that that's a that's a niche you'll see women like her the women who end up in bdsm they're usually like like watch bdsm porn watch that watch that shit especially with those who are in america or like or in a western country watch it they're never hot hot women very real or if they are hot they don't do it for long most of the time there are anomalies here or there but like pay attention to the type of woman who's doing you know the type of sex she's doing Pay attention to that to that physical quality, and then sometimes look into her. Look back at where she came from, and you know her hometown. And most women they just fuck to get out of fucking uh, Topeka. Most women are just fucking to get out of uh, 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 Hamilton. <laughs> they just they, they'll do anything to get it. If she if she figures she's a little cute, she'll deep throw the telephone pole in a second to get out of there. If she's figures she's a little cute and she's got that urge to go out there and do it, oh, it won't take them long to find a dude who'll fly her out and use her fucking holes and throw her out. But this girl, yeah, see, that also with that BD, BDSM shit, that is, oh, don't, don't, don't get it twisted. All pornography is prostitution, all right, point, point blank. You're getting paid the fuck. You're, you're a hooker. Whoever this woman is, I don't know who you are. Who is this woman? A, Contessa Doll. You're a prostitute. That's what it is. Actually, I want to go into sex work. What they will never tell you. They will never tell you this. I want to go. I want to watch this. This is a, a bonus clip. <laughs> Let's go to this. I think it would be this. great if society could see the whole industry as not an umbrella term and that there are different categories. My name is Judy Moore. I am single and my sexuality is fluid currently. I'm a stripper, I do topless white dressing, I also run OnlyFans and I sell online explicit content. My name is Cherry Dana, I am 34, mm. I am always single and mm, I started in the industry when I was 21. I started oh, yeah. as a lingerie waitress into stripping 
and then into digital content. My name is Tamara Rose. I'm married, I'm 40 years old, and I'm straight. I've been working yeah, in the industry look. for it makes sense. probably a bit over 15 years, and I um, do a little bit of topless and lingerie waitressing as well, but mostly I'm a showgirl. I'm Quinn, I'm a stripper, I'm bisexual, and I'm in a relationship. <laughs> Y'all so see that? What? people perceive the industry to be. I think they perceive people that are in the industry to be either dirty or of lower class of society or traumatized. Whereas people within the industry, there are some great human beings. They thrive within business, have big hearts. They're... Well, yeah, yeah, real, I wanna pause real quick. Yeah, see, okay. This, she touched on, 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 on a good topic. Let's rewind that real fast or traumatized whereas people are either dirty or of right luxury here. to be perceived people that are in the industry to be either dirty or of lower class of society or traumatized whereas people yeah she touched on a really good topic right there see society has always looked down on on on, on, on prostitutes because because prostitution is always prostitution is woman's easiest way to make money right society has always looked down on women for that and just like society always looks down on men when men beat up motherfuckers you know when, when men take money by physical force society will not hide, go, go out there go out there and get you a, a, a physical violence felony on your record and good luck finding a job with that shit Good luck. Just like with a woman, when, and when a woman goes out there who does prostitution and she gets a conviction of that shit, or she's known the world, yeah, good luck finding a job after that. See, what? Pay attention to that shit. Pay attention to how the world acts and revolves. She touched on a very, a very good thing. See, there are some people, just like okay, for example, there are some some men who naturally like to just fight physically. They just love it. They just love it. But like I said, you go out there and get you a, a felony in assault and battery or some shit like that and where it's like physical you 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 know it is clear this was physical shit oh like good luck getting respect in the working world good luck it once people find out at a party that you got that or you know we if somebody who's going to be super judgmental about it if they find out you got it well good luck they staying friends with them a good friend of mine he he got he i mean he he got a real bad felony i think he was like 17 but they tried him as an adult the dude who was living in my flat uh in ohio he he got he got a real i got a, a few friends and my brother he has a violent felony too I, oh man finding a job like boy that is no in america that is no joke once you get that physical once you get that physical violence on your record good luck finding it now all of them got my brother and the two friends of mine they all they all got jobs but boy, I, I was there with. I never, I never got any felonies. But I, but I, I've been friends with them for, for well over, with the two friends. I've been friends with them well over ten years now. And you know, of course, the other one was my brother. Like, and I tell you what, none of them have have ever done anything. If anything, they were always too nice to me. But, but I get how society will treat you if you get that violent record. Society, you are an outcast. But like I said. To the, to the friends and family that I got with Violent Records, if anything, they were more... I had an uncle... I'm going I'm going on the whole side tangent now, but the core is, you know, women being outcast for prostitution, for prostitutes, being prostitutes. I had an uncle, man. Like, no joke, my uncle... Big dude, tall, big, like, like he, like I always heard stories about him, how, how he, he, used to, he used to beat up and take men and women's money. He didn't give a fuck. <laughs> that, motherfucker, yeah, that, motherfucker, that motherfucker was a gangster or something, but he, he was a big dude too. But by the time I started seeing him, he had a lot of health problems. But and he, but I remember he, but he would always be really nice to me, man. Like I don't get it. Like I don't get what it is about me with that shit. But for some reason, motherfuckers that that motherfuckers that that are like outcasts in society always take to me for some reason and like and like you know they have never done me wrong if anything i probably did them wrong more than they did me wrong if i really think about it but like i get but again i get how society is society when they know you done something like that oh they don't need no we don't trust you and same thing with women who are prostitutes once once women women do pro porn and shit once it's clear that woman got paid for sex woman survived off of sex it's the same thing as a man surviving off beating up motherfuckers okay it's the same shit with how society's gonna treat you it's like oh you you they say it's as if society looks at you and goes oh you took the easy way out so we don't like this 
and the reason I'm I'm saying this is because, again, I don't have a problem with prostitutes. I I, uh, I don't have a problem with prostitutes. Okay, my problem with prostitutes is when they try to walk around like like there's some hot shit and they smelling themselves too much. That's when I don't like them. Porn star prostitutes, whoever the fuck. That's when I got a problem with them. But back to the core core issue of what she was talking about is this. There are plenty of women who want to at least try prostitution. I told you guys a story a long time ago about a good friend of mine. We all were sitting down at a table, and I was telling him about my stories of fucking hookers and prog, right? It was me, him, his wife. And, and I was telling him stories about this one girl I knew. She, uh, she would make like $500 in one hour, which is, okay, you got to think. In Europe, sex is not taboo, so hookers don't cost anywhere near as much as in America. This same woman could have got $500 just to go on a date in America. But over here, they ain't getting ready to do that over here. It's, it's just a different mentality. But this girl, she, was, she got $500 that let like four or five dudes, you know, come in, fuck her and leave, come in, fuck, like one right after, like they was all homies and shit. And she, I mean, she told me all types of stories, like ridiculous, all types of stories. But this was just one. And the dude's uh, girl, he, she said, "Oh, I would do that." And he was like, "What? <laughs> you would do that?" And she's like, "Yeah, it's not like, like, yeah, I would do. I mean, all you just just let them just hump you for a while and leave, and you make five hundred dollars. Of course, a woman would rather do that. Just like, of course, I mean." Of course, okay, it's even easier for him because a man actually has to like put terror in, into a motherfucker to, to to get by. Where a woman, a woman could just literally just lay there and just let a motherfucker hump her and get and, and she'll get paid for it. You see what I'm saying? Of course, what what woman would not? How uh, women? Be be honest with yourself. And I found this to be true more times than not. You, if you get a woman alone, especially especially when you've already fucked, and you get to talking to her, right? And you seriously talk to her, you know, not like super focused, but like you seriously, you know, like in a calm way, bring it up. Like, uh, uh, would, would you try prostitution, blah, blah. And, and, and the most common response is the woman just, is, if, if a woman would not do it, most of the time it's because she's worried about who's going to find out later. The, the woman doesn't care about, you know, getting fucked for money. It's about who's going to find out that it happened. See, like I say so many times before, man, with, 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 I'm, I'm way off now, but women in the dating market, it's not really about you. It's about what other people are gonna think of her when she's seen with you. See, see because like I say, women, they, they don't have genuine, deep down characteristics when it comes to producing something in the world. Like they have it, but they keep it within themselves because they're always worried about fitting in with the world. But if you get them alone off somewhere, oh man, you got models fucking, like, dudes you would never believe. Dudes who are not good-looking dudes at all, have no money, blah, blah, But they're so worried about how the world's going to see them that they want to put on this image for the world to see. But more times than not, when I talk to women, more times than not, it's not about, you know, shame from doing porn or anything like that. Well, okay, it's not about shame, like, in the sense of, like, oh, no, I would never take money from my pussy type of thing. See, that's where, that's what men, see, men, we have morals when it comes to this shit. See, we, a lot of men just wouldn't do it. But women, see, see, but, but the thing is men project that shit on the women. So a woman shouldn't want to have sex in exchange for money. No, see, you got it twisted. Woman does not care about the sex for money exchange. She doesn't care about that at all. That, that means nothing. If anything, that's a benefit. She just lays there, opens a fucking hole, and let a dick slide in and out of it and gets paid. She doesn't care about that shit. Okay, what she cares about is who's going to find out that she fucked this dude. Okay, because let's be real. Out, 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 of, out, out of any female family member I have and blah, 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 blah okay, the end result is that man, has to, he has to come out of some form of currency the the, the 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 fuck my female family member okay that's just how well, that's how females are pro that's how woman's program she it, it to be woman is to be prostitute there has to be some type of payment now when it comes back to this specific woman and what she says society wants to see prostitutes as you know lower it, traumatized blah 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 no well, yeah, well I see what she's saying I, and I agree with her but in reality some women just naturally want to try this shit. And then some of them figure, oh, like, this is actually too much work. I, I got to put on makeup and answer to people still. I ain't trying to do this. Or or maybe some women just don't like it. But there's a lot of women who just want to do it. And there's a lot of women who just want to do it who aren't physically attractive. Uh, there's a lot of women who want to who do it, but they're stuck too deep in 
they're, they're, they're stuck too deep in, in their career and their family and friends. They're, every, they're, they're too, just too, far too afraid to risk it. There's so many different variables to it. See, woman's, woman's main fear is what other people think of her. Man's fear for what men do that's looked down by society. Our thing is we really don't want to hurt people and put, and put terror into people and have people afraid and shit. Like, we, don't, we really don't want to hurt people. See, that, that's the balance. But anyway, that was a long-ass rant. My bad. Let's get to the well, within the industry, there are some great human beings. They thrive within business, have big hearts. They're super happy, positive. They're always helpful for other people. They're always growing mentally, emotionally, um, physically working on themselves. They're great mentors as well, great friends. So I think it'd be great if society could see the whole industry as not an umbrella term and that there are different categories within the industry. There are different entertainers with different roles, boundaries. I think it goes for anyone in the sex worker industry because we're really all under the same umbrella but just different tiers of that umbrella. There's definitely a lot of people that don't understand it, that haven't been in the industry and they just see it as whatever they see it as. At the end of the day, for us, it's a job. I support my family doing this job and I've made a career out of it and I absolutely love it and met some of the most amazing people doing this job. I think destigmatizing the industry would definitely help with mental health support. I find that there's a bit of judgment no matter how much the stigma is trying to be beaten at the moment and how people are trying to protect. Hey, real quick, now I'm looking at her, I'm thinking about the whole thing of, of Okay, cause I, cause I know my motherfuckers know, you know, feminist was a uh, female dating strategy, all this shit, and and I, I I read something about the terminology. They call, okay, like this woman would call this woman a a a a, a pick me, a, a a pick me please, a pick me type of girl, please pick me because I'm pretty. You see, this woman would would call this woman that in that in that world, right? But see, the thing that female dating strategy and all that shit, see. The thing that those bitches don't realize is this. In if they go if, if any porn, any OnlyFans, whatever, this woman has her need, has her area for guys who will pay her money to, to do whatever. Because they like girls that look like that. They some guys like girls that, you know, are, are ugly. They specifically like girls who are ugly. They like for whatever reason. All these women have. And you see, the, the problem with that whole female dating strategy shit is. They don't want to have to compete with other women. So with that part of population, that's essentially what the last woman was. Uh, that, that not uh, the, in, in the last video was. She doesn't want to have to go out and compete with other women. She wants to just be alone in, in her own little world and bubble with it. Because just the thought of another woman doing anything better than her kills her. You see? Anyway, let's just keep this shit going. No matter how much the stigma is trying to be beaten at the moment and how people are trying to pretend that sex work is becoming normalised and everything like that, I think it's a lot harder to find support to speak to. My friends, family, a therapist, professional, even people in the industry, I think it's hard to speak to because for one, we have to act like, no, everything's fine, we're, we're, we're resilient. And then the other side of personal things is, well, you're doing this, so that's up to you to deal with. I think people get confused that there are different categories and people have different boundaries within the industry and that the boundaries are the mentality. So everybody has mentally, I will, or I won't do this. Mentally, I'm not okay with doing this. You cannot touch me. So therefore, if somebody doesn't like being touched, they're not going to be an escort. So a guy can go to a strip club and expect an escort, but the girl is in a strip club working because she doesn't escort. If she was gonna escort, she'd be escorting because clearly you make more money escorting. I think you need to be resilient in the industry. I think there's a lot of obstacles and <clears throat> some very uncomfortable situations that you're going to end up in that will shoot down your confidence. I think you just need to literally just bite the bullet and keep going. That's basically what you have to do in this industry. I have received online and in person negative responses to having a large social media and also creating adult content. I used to live in Newcastle. I stopped going out because 
There were three occasions in the six month period where girls were actually like pegging their drinks at my face for no reason. And I think it's because people are uneducated about the whole industry that they just project their fears and stereotypes. We are empowering ourselves because we have dealt with a lot of shit. Obviously I won't go into some of the things, but yeah, just shit. So I think trying to, yeah, uplift each other, support each other, empower ourselves and ground ourselves compared to yeah there's some there's some shit things that we deal with i think working in the industry has definitely made me feel a lot more comfortable in my own skin and a lot more accepting of my own body being exposed to a lot of different kinds and like how beautiful everybody is in their own ways so with digital content when you get like feedback from guys they're, they're super encouraging about body parts and you get a lot nicer feedback from strangers than I think you do from people that you would wish that you got it from. I think working in the industry has changed the way I view sexuality only because it made me a lot more comfortable in my own body. Before the industry, I was very, very insecure with my own body, um, my private parts, any little imperfection I didn't see as normal. And I don't think many people realise how different we all are. So I think instead of society seeing adult entertainers and sex workers as objects, they start seeing them as humans and treat them the exact same they would any family member, any friend, and just treat them better and be open-minded. Some of the best people and with the biggest hearts I found come from the industry. At the end of the day, it is something that they still pay for in a way. Whether it be physically or digitally, they still consume our products. Oh, well, yeah, I agree with her, what she said right there about, uh, about about me and some great people. Oh, there's some great some some great people. Some some great hookers. You meet some great people in there. You can totally meet some great ones. I like I'll be the first one to tell you that. You can meet some 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 great women, some great hookers who has amazing personalities. I mean that that are that are great. That you know. But my, I remember my girl, she asked me, she said, what, why are women like this? Why are women always so, like, how come women just can't come together and, 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 and be strong together, blah, blah, blah. And the reason why is because woman has the attention span of je with jealousy and, went, and, become, and becoming envious as, 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 as a spoiled three-year-old child. All it's going to take is, is one woman. Once they finally united, once all women finally united, all it's going to take is for one for one to 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 go, uh, and that's gonna be it. Just go, uh, and the other one's like, oh, she thinks she cute, <laughs> and that's it. That's it. Women can't, y'all can't unite. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> all right, I can say that in full confidence. It's not gonna, if it happens, it's not gonna happen. All right. Let let's say, let's say if the world let let's say. All men died. This time, by this time next year, every man on earth would be dead, right? It, okay, I can guarantee you, within within the first two months, anything with moving parts will will be a relic. <laughs> All right, you would there would be no more running water or electricity. Okay, that oh, the, I, I say probably the first thing to go is is is. Grocery stores. <laughs> Anything that requires planning, no matter regardless of how you feel, those are gonna be the first things to go. The running water, water. There would be no more running water. Uh, electricity will be gone within. I say within a year. And that's and I. The only reason I give it a year is because that just might be how long it'll it'll last before actual maintenance is needed on it. About a year. Because <laughs> and, and there because there's not gonna y'all ain't gonna unite. You can't. Because even if all men die, now now it's gonna be competing for more, just more attention in general. They women women cannot unite. You can't you is it's not gonna happen. I can say it in full complete confidence. Uh there it is. Y'all you can't unite. <laughs> it's just not gonna happen. But yeah, back to the um to the to the to the sex house. She's a sex worker, blah blah blah. 
sex work. Well, women, every woman on Tinder is in, is sex work. Okay, it's all sex work. The, let, let's just, the only difference is the, these women are on camera putting on a show for it. That that's the only difference is these women are 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 on stages on a pole or on camera putting on a show for it. That's the you know that's the only because we you, know what I'm saying? you you take a woman out or anything like that like who who's gonna pay? Who who who's expected to pay when you take a woman out? The man, right? And if a woman's pays or she even has to pay half, she's like ah yeah. <laughs> to be a woman is to be, like like women stop fighting it. To be a woman is to be prostitute and and. It works well, relatively, for the first 25, 30 years. Well, for, as I say, the first 10 years of adulthood, it works. But then it slowly goes down, and that's where you start to spiral. Anyway, that's the video. <laughs> what else they got in y'all? Uh, yeah, ain't nothing else in here I want to see. All right, man, but that's the video. I'm out. You guys have a good day. Oh, I'm going to do either a live stream. To, what's to, today's Thursday, either, either tomorrow. I got to upload the Patreon, too, because I haven't uploaded a video in there in a while. But, yeah, I'm out of here, man. You guys have a good day. Bye.